With the advent of ultrasound, which virtually every pregnant woman now gets several ultrasounds in pregnancy, we can see the fetus. So not only can we see a normal fetus, but we can see an abnormal fetus. And so now, pretty much in every pregnancy at around five months, a woman gets what we call an anatomical scan. And with that scan, we find anomalies, we find problems. And it's that situation that leads into fetal medicine. So I think it started with the procedure I saw as a resident, which is intrauterine transfusion, not just putting blood in a baby that's anemic. And that's pretty much all we had. That first was done in 1963. And when ultrasound got better, we began to not only see things better, but to be able to do things. And so soon after that, we began thinking about things like shooting a laser inside and treating twin-twin transfusion. And then we knew we could detect spina bifida, but we began to operate on babies in utero with spina bifida. So spina bifida is a class of uh, one type of what's called neural tube defects. And early in the pregnancy, even before the mom knows she's pregnant, the spine doesn't close. We're not sure why. It, we think there is a genetic component to it. But basically, you're left with a lower spine that's open with uh, tissues from the spinal cord, some of the spinal nerves, herniated into a sac of fluid. That herniation and that defect causes problems with leg movement, uh, with sensory of the lower body, with bowel function, with bladder function. And so those children typically end up in a wheelchair after they're born uh, with the inability to walk or control their bowel habits or their bladder. So there was a study done in the United States where we took half the patients, we randomized them to either in utero repair or repair after birth. And in utero repair was actually the mom has to go to sleep and we open the uterus and we move the baby around. We don't take it out. Some people think we deliver the baby, we don't. But we move the baby around and bring the spina bifida to the top of the uterine incision. And then our neurosurgery colleague comes in and repairs the spina bifida just like they would after birth. Uh, but they have to do it much quicker. And then we sew everything back up and leave the baby inside. And when that baby's born, it has twice the chance of walking without the need for wheelchair or crutches and it has half the chance of needing any kind of treatment for its hydrocephalus. So pretty dramatic outcomes in those children after they've had that surgery. And there are lots of people doing these different surgeries in different areas, some just getting started, but learning what the experience of the center is, I think is very important so that you have the right people doing the right surgery and with the right team. I can't do what I do without a team. You can go into a spina bifida surgery and there'll be 30 people in the room. I'm one of many cogs in the wheel to make this a successful outcome.